I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that's really important to me as a musician and as a teacher of music, which is that you have to really do it in a state of flow if you want to be fluent. So what do I mean by that? I mean, it's one of those phrases, isn't it, that we, we hear a lot. It's banded about state of flow. They call it peak performance state sometimes or um, being in the zone. So, I, you know, I want to be in the zone when I play the piano. Like always, every single time. So I have to be able to sort of drop myself into a state of flow at, at will, on demand. So what does, it, what does it look like? What is a state of flow? I mean, obviously, there's, you know, there's a lot of brain science behind this idea. The um, scientist, psychologist, Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi Mikhail has written a lot about the state of flow, done a lot of studies. Um, I've heard a lot of brain scientists say it's difficult to see what's sort of happening on a sort of, um, you know, neurological level, on a, a neurotransmitter level in the brain when you're in a state of flow. I've even heard it said that it looks as if you're in a state of crisis, you know, like a state of emergency, almost panic. Uh, and yet I would say it feels very calm, a state of flow. So it's interesting, isn't it? I'll show it to you. I'll go into a state of flow. I mean, I'm not really in the same... I mean, I'm in a sort of state of flow now because I'm having to talk to the camera and I'm having to stay focused. It has elements of a state of flow, but it's not as, as sort of defined as the state I go into, the peak performance state I go into when I improvise. So I'll improvise for you. Improvising is a very distilled way to do it. Now, it's, improvising is no longer a very common skill. It does actually make me wonder if the state of flow is as, as common as it is in terms of people talking about it out there. It may not be something that is very commonly achieved by people. Uh, certainly probably not in the field of music. So, um, so yeah, improvising really puts me in that state. It drops me right into that state of flow. So there's no planning here. I haven't got any idea what I'm going to play. Um, no prior structures, no melodies, no chord set sequences or anything. As I always say, it's a blank canvas. And obviously that's a certain kind of challenge. That's why I need the state of flow. Let's see what it looks like. So what did it look like? Well, probably just looked like I was playing the piano. That's the thing, isn't it? It's 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 difficult to describe. What what it, it I can tell you what it isn't. It's not just sort of being productive. It's not sort of designing ideas. It's not sort of going, oh, what shall I play next? I don't I have really no idea. It's more like going for a walk. It feels like going for a walk on one level. It's very, very simple. But I'm also extremely sort of focused. I'm I'm focused very hard. I I, so I'm, I'm working hard. It takes a lot of practice. The point is you have to focus very hard because the brain has got a lot of distractions all the time if if you don't work on that. So I've, I've practiced and practiced to, to n sort of narrow down my focus to just the right amount so that I get rid of the distractions. So I always define a state of flow as being a state of focus but simultaneously letting go. So, so what do I mean by letting go? I mean, you probably had a sense that I was kind of feeling it, you know? You could sort of see how I was letting go. But that wasn't because I was acting or pretending or something like that. It's because I'm actually, you know, surrendering something. I'm sort of deliberately not controlling what I'm doing. So, so it's not being productive. It's not designing ideas. It's not making it all easy and simple and just relaxed. It's none of those things. It's being very, very focused and simultaneously letting go. So obviously this takes practice, and, and like any practice, it's really important to start very simple. So obviously the language of music, the way I teach it in my course, you know, I, I sort of designed the course in such a way that the language 
gradually becomes more complex, the, the way that we use it, the model stays the same. So if I take just a very simple harmonic block of C-sharp minor, and I'm just going to play really simple rhythm cells, dums and diddles, in the really simple common time groove, common time matrix, and I'll just play on that harmonic block all over the keyboard. I'm going to really focus so that I know what I'm doing, but I'm going to let go as well. So what's going on there? So I'm, as I say, I'm very focused on simple, in that case, very simple, very clear um, principles. But I focus on them moment by moment, and it's very thinly sliced time. Obviously, I use the rhythmic matrix to do this, it's not just linear slices of time, it's not like a sliced loaf of bread. It's got a, a non-linear structure to it, it's got a groove. And that really helps. The more that I kind of, you know, have that gr groove structure in place, which is non-linear, the easier it is for me, in a way, to stay focused. It's like a phone number. If you say a phone number um, in, the, in the groove, it's sort of easy to remember. It feels more solid. If you just say a list of numbers, it's hard to know what you're saying. Do you see what I mean? Uh, six, one, seven, four, three, two. Giving it a bit of rhythm like that kind of feels more more meaningful. But I'm straying into the realm of letting go here because the point is that rhythm has meaning, it has this feeling. And so we have to sort of let go and let it flow and let it let it feel like it's meaningful. Same with the sound of the block. You have to let go and feel it. So I'm focusing in this way moment by moment in order to play something that sounds meaningful and real like music, even though what I'm actually playing is very, very simple. And when you play like that, when you play in that musical way, you get a double reward because you get the reward of expressing yourself, but you also get the reward of um, knowing what you're doing. So moment by moment, I'm going, yes, I know what I'm doing. I also weirdly get a reward if I'd noticed my, my focus wander because there's a reward for some noticing that and bringing it back. Have a listen to this. This is, this is still very, very focused, but I want you to hear the difference in what I'm doing. So that's very stiff sounding, isn't it? It doesn't sound like music. It doesn't sound like I'm intending it. Whereas that does, so does this. So you might be thinking, well, what's the difference? You know, if I'm, if I'm still focused on the same principles, I'm still doing the same you know, basic thing, what's the difference? It's not in the realm of focus, it's more in the realm of letting go. So it's another one of those phrases, isn't it? Letting go, you hear it everywhere, just let go. I think people sort of think it, sort of, it means something like, you know, put your feet up and relax, it'll all just happen when you're ready. There's no urgency. Oh, there is urgency, believe me, there's urgency. When, you, when you're improvising and you play music, you've got to play the next thing when it's meant to be played. So it's not a piece of cake. It's not something like putting your feet up and having a relax. That's not letting go. What I mean by letting go is something quite different. It's more like letting go of the side when you're not a very experienced, you're not an experienced skater, letting go of the side and skating out into the ice. And sort of trusting and letting go and letting your body kind of guide you. You might well fall over. It's being tolerant to that, being tolerant to falling over. Tolerant to failure is part of letting go, not needing to be perfect. So when someone's learning to surf, they need to let go. They have to fall off that surfboard. They have to. You need some principles. You need to, I mean, you can definitely get better with coaching. That's why I have a model that we focus on. Um, what would it be with surfing? Something like keeping your centre of gravity over the board, maybe a certain kind of stance that you, you learn to help you, help you do it. Um, 
But basically, you've got to just do it and, and fail and let go. And you practice, you practice that. What else is letting go? Jumping out of an aeroplane would, would require letting go. You'd have to trust that that parachute is going to open and work. So in a way, what I'm saying is letting go, you know, is about courage. If you're going to dive off the top board and you have a fear of heights and a fear of water, you can see why letting go might be something very difficult. And, you know, it's very obvious in more extreme things like that, that, that there is fear and it takes a certain kind of courage to let go. And that's what I mean by letting go. It's surrendering or abandoning any kind of safety or caution. Sailing close to the wind is another phrase that I, I often use. You have to do it. You have to be able to... to let your body and soul take over. That's the way I see it. I see your head does the focusing and your body and soul actually drives the music, actually plays it. Your head just navigates. Your head just watches. It focuses. It watches. It observes closely moment by moment. But you let go and you allow your inner musician, your inner sort of natural sense of music to take over. So taking the plunge am i really am i really having to take a plunge to do this am i having to like jump off the high board and plunge myself into icy water when i do this What I did on the level of focus in that very simple improvising of the type that I want my, you know, beginner level students to do, that's kind of beginner level, okay? So on the level of focus, what I'm doing is very, very simple. Very, very simple. Just doing C-sharp minor all over the keyboard, that's kind of easy. Doing dums and diddles in the Matrix, it's kind of easy. I mean, it might go wrong a bit at first, people might start going... But you fail, you just go again, you just try again. You fall off the surfboard, you get back on it. The rhythm goes wrong, if you play the wrong keys, you just refocus, you bring your focus back. It takes a bit of practice. But within not that many hours of practice, you can develop the focus necessary to do that. Letting go is a bit of another story. Letting go is difficult. And the answer to the, to the question, did I have to take a, uh, an icy plunge to, <laughs> to do that? The answer is kind of yes. And the point is, I enjoy doing that. That's the state of flow. I'm very focused. I know what I'm doing. And I let go. So see if I can sort of clarify this a bit more. When I was 13, um, I went on a roller coaster. And I had a miserable time on this roller coaster. It was a very scary roller coaster, very, you know, tall high, fast, lots of twists and turns. Scary roller coaster. And I had a miserable time on it. And when I came off it, I realised I'd been gripping it very hard, holding, closing my eyes, holding my breath. You know, I was a funny colour. I felt sick. It wasn't nice. And I looked around and I noticed that the people that had enjoyed the roller coaster had a different sort of attitude to it than I did. They, they were more, well, they let go. They were free. You know, they put their hands in the air, they'd probably scream. They didn't stiffen their body and try to brace themselves against all the movement. They just kind of went with it. So I thought I'd try it. Give it a go. Throw caution to the wind. I'm safe. I'm safely housed in the, in the, in the seat with a strapped in, you know. What's the problem? Just let go, see what happens. And of course, I enjoyed it. And I've liked roller coasters really ever since because I realised that in order to enjoy that kind of experience, you have to abandon fear. <laughs> you have to let go. And that's another way of explaining what I mean. When, when you play music, when you practice music, when you really practice for the fluency, that's what you have to do. You have to really trust your inner musician. You have to trust that you have an inner musician, that it works perfectly, and let go. So why is music scary? Why is it scary to go... Why is that scary? Is it, is it, is it fear of going wrong? Am I, am I afraid of making a fool of myself for going wrong? Well, a bit maybe, a bit. But then even when people become very certain of what they're doing, when the model is very clear in their mind, they still don't let go. What are they not letting go, go to? What is it that they are holding on? 
for? What, what's the scary? What's the scary monster here? Believe it or not, what it is is I mean, it might be clear already, but I'm going to say it. It's your self-expression. You see, the way that music's taught, for the most part, is passive. We we execute. We execute music correctly. We think of music as something outside of us that we have to get right. And for most people, that just creates a terrible amount of tension. It just makes it really, really difficult. It's it's definitely not a, a, a fluent thing because you're not... It's like learning a poem in a foreign language, isn't it? Without needing to speak the language. Anyone could do that. So they, you play from muscle memory. To play fluently, you have to let go because you have to mean it. So that fear of actually saying something real is really quite quite something. Why? I mean, why is that the case? We're all perfectly capable of talking. Well, the truth is that even the most expressive speech, the most expressive, you know, literary works <laughs> are not quite as far out as music. I mean, if I suddenly put some music into my words and speak in rhythm, put the words in rhythm, you can see that it puts a very different feeling on what I'm doing. And people are scared to do that. They're just scared to do it. Like, they're scared to hit the dance floor uh, when there's no one else dancing and they haven't had a drink. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's, it is actually scary. It's really, it is fear of making a fool of yourself. But it's fear that what it is you're expressing is childish and foolish intrinsically. Do you see what I mean? That, that actually you're being silly. So there are all sorts of ways of expressing ourselves, whether it's kind of deep and dark. I'll do some other blocks. I'll stick with the simple stuff of just sing, single harmonic blocks, but I'll, 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 I'll do some other ones. This one's F minor, and I'm going to do it really dark and mysterious. So that might scare some people. Some people might be more scared of being very sort of sweet and something really, really pretty. And Or maybe I'm the sort of person that might be afraid of being stupid and really goofy. I might be afraid of any or all of those things and so many other things. And that's the point. We have to express those things to sound musical. We have to tell a story. The way that groove works, I've done an earlier video talking about groove, it creates a feeling of story or feeling of poetry, which is a funny thing to say because stories and poetry are more in the realm of language. But it's the music in language, the, the sort of rhythmic structure of language that creates this sense of poetry or structure. So rhythm really is what creates story. Or, or, or poetry in language. So you have to tell that story. You have to be prepared to play with that groove. A lot of it's to do with rhythm, really. A lot of it's to do with letting the rhythm flow in our body and playing naturally, playing the keys in a way that feels connected and natural. But it's also about this kind of thing of meaning or feeling. So every note that I, every sound I make, has to be the sound I intend. If I play that, I mustn't mean that. And I certainly mustn't mean that, you know? So we have to build this, this sense that our choices make sense. Our choices are what we mean to say. And choices are intrinsically quite scary. I mean, you know, I don't know people who can even seem to be quite frightened to decide what restaurant they're going to or when they get there, what they're going to eat off the menu. It's like, well, what if someone gets something and it looks better than I get? And, da, da, da. and improvising is really good for this because, you know, you have to just be with whatever choice you make the next moment. So it's scary stuff. Playing music fluently requires that you face that fear and then abandon that fear and let go. And that's exhilarating. When you really let go, it feels easy and exhilarating.
And of course, it's also a challenge, and, and we love a challenge. So I love to improvise something like I do something like in, in five time. And, you know, I'll put some chromatic stuff in as well and make it complicated. So I like that challenge. That's, that's part of what the state of flow is. I mean, I'm not sure I was, I was sailing pretty close to the wind. I'm not sure I absolutely maintained my focus perfectly. There is kind of no such thing, especially when you're doing something that's more of a challenge. And that's part of being in the state of flow. You're enjoying the challenge. But the letting go, the meaning, the meaning of what you're saying is the most important thing. Now, why is that? Why is it so necessary for fluency? Well, the simple answer is because it wires the brain. It makes your neuroplastic brain develop in the right way. If you mean what you play and you have a clear sense of what you're actually playing in terms of structure with, with your focus on the model, well, then you become fluent. That's how fluency happens. If you don't really bother to do that, and I think especially as an adult learner, if you don't really let go and enter this state of flow, your brain will not be neuroplastic enough you know so another thing i often say which i think is another big part of being in the state of flow is that you have to play like a child with complete almost silliness you have to just let go and be stupid and enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> 